Hello and welcome back to BeHookedCrochet.com as well as Yonspirations.com. I'm your host Brittany and in today's tutorial I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet the geometric wall hanging. This is a free pattern that's available at Yonspirations.com and you can find the link to that pattern in the description below this video. To complete your geometric wall hanging, you're going to need 15 balls of Lily's Sugar and Cream Cotton in 5 different colors. Now you can follow the pattern to a T using the 5 recommended colors as given in the pattern. We're also going to use a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook, a darning needle, and a pair of scissors. The geometric wall hanging consists of 18 squares and 4 half squares. And for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to be crocheting the square, which requires us to use Robin's Egg as color 1 and Sunshine as color 2. So when we're working these squares, we're going to be working from corner to corner. And we're only going to be working in the single crochet stitch, but the techniques we're going to talk about here are increasing and decreasing. So to begin, we want to make a slip knot. and chain two. Now what we want to do for row one is make three single crochets into our first chain. And that finishes up row one. For row two, we want to chain one and turn our work. And here's where we're going to start increasing. We're always going to increase on the first stitch and the last stitch. We're going to be working in single crochet, so make a single crochet into the first stitch and another single crochet into that first stitch. And there we have increased by one. Now we'll make a single crochet into the next stitch. And since we're at the last stitch, we're going to increase there as well. So make two single crochets into the last stitch. To begin row three, we want to chain one, turn our work. We'll make two single crochets into the first stitch. And then one single crochet into each of the next few stitches. So we have one, two, and three. So we'll make one single crochet into each of the next three stitches. And again, we'll make two single crochets into the very last stitch. So now we should have a total of seven single crochets. So I will point out here, in the written instructions, after you've completed the first row, which is where we made the three single crochets, the next few rows are grouped together. It says second to fifth rows, and it gives you the set of instructions. And the instructions are the exact same for rows two through five. The only difference is the number of stitches. So we're always going to increase on the very first stitch and the very last stitch. And so that's not going to change. So we just need to keep track of which row we're on. So I like to just count them visually. So that's my row one, my row two, my row three. So now we're starting on row four. So we know that we need to increase again based on the instructions. So we'll make two single crochets into the first stitch. And 
and we'll increase again on the last stitch. So we'll just make one single crochet until we've reached that last stitch. So that's two, three, four, and five. And now we'll make two single crochets into the last stitch. Now that finishes up row four. Now moving on to row five. This is the last row that we have to increase. I went ahead and made one chain there to start off the row and turn our work. Now we're going to work this the same. We want to increase. So make a single crochet and two single crochets into the first stitch there. And then make one single crochet into each of the next seven stitches and two single crochets in the last. So at the end of the fifth row, we should have a total of 11 single crochets. You can find that information in your pattern. So we want to do something a little bit different for row six. It's actually much simpler. We're not going to increase. We'll just make a chain one and turn our work. And we just want to make one single crochet into each stitch. And the reason why we're doing that is you've probably noticed that as we're working these rows, we're sort of getting this like fan effect. So if we were to keep increasing for every single row, we're going to end up with more of a fan or an arch. And we want this to be more of a flat edge. And so you'll see by adding this row without increasing, it's going to straighten this arch out that we see from where we've increased. Sometimes this last stitch is a little bit tricky to work into. Sometimes it's even a little difficult to see. You want to make sure you try to catch both of the loops of the V in the stitch in order to get this sort of textured look that we have going on here. So you can see that that helped to straighten out our, our little right triangle that we have going on here. So the next few rows, 7 through 11, we're going to increase again. So that's a total of five rows where we're going to be increasing before we do another row where we're not increasing. So we'll cover the first few rows just so that we can get a better idea. We're doing the exact same thing that we did though for these first few rows. We're going to chain one and turn our work and increase in the first stitch. So what I mean by that, make two single crochets in the first stitch. Now make your single crochets all the way across the row and then make two single crochets in the last stitch.
Okay, so if you're counting along, and I do recommend that you count your stitches as you go, at least when the instructions give you the number of stitches that you're supposed to have. So you'll find those right before you do your row where you aren't increasing. Okay, so on row five, it told us up to this row, you should have a total of 11 stitches. So I'll go ahead and tell you for row seven, which is what we've worked here, we're gonna have 13 stitches. For eight, we're gonna add two, so that'll be 15 stitches, and so on. So to begin row eight, we'll chain one, turn our work, increase in the first and the last stitches and just make one single crochet in the stitches in between. There now, at the end of row eight, we should have a total of 15 stitches, as I mentioned before. Now let's talk real quick about counting our rows, because there were several times where I was working on my square, had to set it down, got interrupted, and had to come back to it, and then I've just completely forgotten where I was by the time I came back to it. So the single crochet stitch looks a little bit different on when you're working in rows. So basically, it's going to form, you see this kind of hard line here, and then you see another hard line there, and right here. So our natural tendency is to count this whole thing, this whole space right here, as one row, and this as another row, and that as another row. But it's actually not correct, because the single crochet stitch looks different on the front than it does on the back. So take a look here. You can see this stitch right here. See how the V is in an upside down position? And then when we turn it over, we see the V is in the correct position. So that's what I mean by when I'm saying that they look different on the front, which is this work right here, and the back, which is what we looked at a second ago. So if we look really closely in between these lines, we'll see that upside down V and the right side up V. So that's how I can tell that there's two rows here. So what I did, and it's a little bit difficult to see it on this first row because there's only a few stitches there, but you want to start counting from the very bottom. So this is row one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Once you get the hang of that, it's gonna be so much easier for you to follow along with this pattern. Let's move along to row nine. We're gonna work this the same. Chain one, turn our work, increase in the first and the last stitches, and just make a single crochet in between. So that's gonna go in all of the stitches in between where we increase. So that finishes off row nine. What I'd like for you to do at this point is finish row 10 and row 11, just the same as we did before. We're gonna increase on both of those rows and then come back to this video. We'll, call, we'll go over row 12, which is going to be the exact same as row six. So at the end of row 11, if you refer back to your pattern, you'll see that we should have a total of 21 stitches you want to double check and make sure that you do have the correct stitch count. If you're off by one, it might not seem like it's a big deal, 
but it's going to make your square a little less symmetrical. So you do want to make sure you have the correct stitch counts. And to move on to row 12, as I mentioned earlier, we're not going to increase on this row. All we want to do is make a single crochet into each of the 21 stitches for this row. So once you've finished up row 12, the next thing that we want to do is increase again. So rows 13 through 17, we're going to increase. So since we've already gone over these concepts and how to crochet these rows, go ahead and work rows 13 through 17 on your own, increasing on the first stitch and the very last stitch. And then we'll meet back up and we'll talk about what to do next. So once you've reached the end of row 17, your square should look something like this. Now there's a couple things that you've probably noticed. One is your square is going to curl. Okay, you can see mine, it's very curled along the corner, and that's perfectly normal. So a little bit of finger blocking will do the trick, and what I mean by that is just taking it and stretching each one of the sides out that's going to help. And the extra step that I took when creating my wall hanging was I wet blocked. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. The other thing you're going to notice is that the edges are a little bit jaggedy. And that's just the nature of the stitch that we're working with. Since we're increasing along this edge here and then this edge here, we just notice that we're, we're just not going to have a straight clean edge like the top where we're working our stitches. And the cool thing about this pattern is that this is going to be concealed. We're going to sew all of the squares together and you're not going to see this jagged edge. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. So there's one more row that we need to complete with our first color. That's row 18. And on this row we're not going to increase. We're just going to chain one and turn and make a single crochet into every stitch. So when we've reached the end of row 18, I left off here with just one stitch remaining. And what we want to do at this point is join on our second color. And in case I didn't mention it in the last clip here, at the end of row 17 and for row 18, we're going to have a total of 31 stitches. So the way I like to change colors is I'm going to make part of my single crochet. So I've got my hook inserted, I'm yarning over, and pull through. And I'm going to leave it at this point for just a second. Now go ahead and grab your second color, and you want to leave yourself about three inches or so of a tail so we can weave that in later, and just fold it down. Then place that on your hook, and pull it through both of the loops. and then just set that aside. You can grab your scissors and trim off your blue or your color one. And then I just like to tie just one, I'm not really tying a knot, just tie that these two ends together just once. And you want to pull tight and that's going to keep everything in place until we can weave those in. Now you can go ahead and pick up your second color and proceed by chaining one, turning your work, 
And at this point, we're ready to begin row 19. So row 19 is worked the same way as row 18. We've already made our chain one and turned our work. So now we just need to make one single crochet into each stitch. So at the end of row 19, your work should look something like this. We should have a nice clean color transition. And now we're ready for the fun part. We're going to be decreasing. And at this point, the project goes really fast because we're decreasing our stitches on almost all of the rows. And it's really quick from this point on. To begin row 20, we want to chain one and turn our work and we're going to decrease over the first two stitches. So basically what that means is we're going to take the first stitch and the second stitch and we're going to combine it into one. And we're going to do that by making a single crochet two together. So you want to insert your hook into the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, now leave that there. Insert your hook into the second stitch, yarn over, and pull up a, th a third loop. Now when you have those three loops on your hook, you can yarn over and pull through all three. Now if you look at the top of your work here, you can see that we just have the one stitch. So that is how you make a single crochet decrease. We're going to do that at the very beginning and the very end of the next few rounds. So uh, rows. So rows 20 through 24 we're going to be working like this. Now we can go ahead and make a single crochet until we've reached the other side and then we'll decrease as I mentioned over the next over the last two stitches. So let's go over that decrease one more time. Once you've made your single crochets in between the, the two decreases here, there's 27 stitches there. So just a point of reference for you. When you have two stitches remaining, we're going to decrease again. And that is all there is to it. So that was row 20. We're going to work on row 21. We'll cover that decrease one more time here. Okay. So now that you have a pretty good idea of what you need to accomplish for the next few rows, go ahead and finish up. So we're, as I mentioned, we're working on row 21 here. We want to continue like this until we've reached row 24, including row 24 though. We're going to decrease on each row for 22, 23, and 24, just like we covered in that last row. When you've done that, come back to this video and we'll talk about what to do next. So at the end of row 24, your square should look something like this. And you're going to have a total of 21 stitches at the end of row 24. Now just like we did in the first section of our squares, row 25 we're not going to decrease. So we'll chain one, turn our work, and just make one single crochet into each of the remaining stitches in this row. 
So that should be 21 stitches. So now I've completed row 25, and at this point rows 26 through 30 are going to be all decreasing rows. So just like we did before, we're going to decrease over the first two stitches and over the last two. And since we've gone over this already, Let's go ahead and work up rows 26 through 30, all decreasing, okay? So decreasing for each one of those rows. And then we'll meet back up and we'll talk about how to finish off our square. We're almost finished now. So at the end of row 30, you can see our squares are almost done. We just have a few more rows to go. Row 31, we're not going to decrease. So make one single crochet into every stitch for a total of 11 stitches. Now rows 32 through 35, we're going to decrease again. So I just finished working up row 32. I'm going to start on row 33. Again, this is a decreasing row, as well as 34 and 35. So go ahead and finish up those last few rows, and you should end up with just three stitches remaining for row 36. Okay, as I mentioned, when you've reached the end of row 35, we should have a total of three stitches. So when we're starting row 36, we want to have three stitches to work with. So to begin the final row for our squares, we just want to chain one and turn our work. And this time we're going to make a single crochet three together. So we're going to take all three of these stitches and bring it down to one. We'll do it in the same way as we have done the single crochet two together. We're just going to add that extra stitch in. So then you should have a total of four loops on your hook. You'll yarn over and pull through all four. Now the last thing you want to do is bind off and leave yourself about three inches or so. And then if you pull the tail through your hook, or through the loop on your hook rather, then that will secure the square and close up that corner. 
And that's all there is to crocheting these squares. The last thing we want to do is weave in the tail. So we've got a tail on each corner and where we have the join. I recommend doing this as you go along because if you have too many tails to weave in, at the very end, it's just no fun at all. So what I did was I kept up with this. When I finished one square, I went ahead and weaved in the ends. So I'll show you how I did that next. So for this step, you're going to need your darning needle. And you want to use one of your smaller darning needles. So I have a couple of different sizes here. The larger ones work really well for worsted weight yarns that have a, a bigger tension. But honestly, this needle is going to be too big to fit through the stitches. So you want to get the smallest needle that you can that will still fit on, that will, the yarn will still fit through the hole. So then what I've been doing is just working up the side and finding a row of stitches and working my needle under all of those stitches. Now since this is something that's going to hang on a wall, it's not really going to get any wear and tear, you can be a little more relaxed about the ends that you're weaving in. Plus, your tension should be pretty tight, so it's, I mean as you can see, it's kind of hard to weave these tails in so it's going to be hard to get them out as well. So I went through a few stitches here. I'll jump up to the next row and work through a few more. And that should really be sufficient enough for our purposes. So then we can simply trim that and move on to the next. So we'll weave in this tail the same way and what you'll want to do where we've tied these together, I have been keeping it tied and then just sort of switching it over so that I'm weaving the yellow in on the yellow side. So what I'll do is just weave it all the way up as far as I can go and then trim it off and then do the same thing for the blue. It's pretty straightforward so we probably don't need to go over that in too much detail. So now that we've completed our first square, there's a couple of different things that you can do. You can go ahead and finish crocheting all of the remaining squares. And you can do that according to the instructions. It'll tell you exactly which two colors you need to pair together. And it's going to tell you how many squares you're going to need with that color pattern. So we've gone through how to do the squares with the video tutorial. And everything is going to be exactly the same moving forward, except you're going to be using the colors in a different way. In addition to all of your squares, according to the instructions, you're going to need four of these half squares. Now there's really no need to demonstrate this in the video tutorial because it's the same as rows 1 through 18. So if you want to scroll back to the beginning of the video, follow just the first half of the square, and you're going to bind off at the end instead of changing colors. So the stitches are the same, the technique is exactly the same. You're going to need four of these. So once you've crocheted all of your squares and all of your corners, and you've woven in all of your ends, then there is just one thing left to do. So here you can see two of my squares that I have wet blocked. And they're very similar in size, so they're basically the same length and they meet up really nicely along this seam. And so yes, they are the same pattern, but we do have some natural variability in our crochet. So we might not always have the same exact tension every single time, especially if we're covering this project over a week or two weeks or more. So wet blocking is a way to make sure that all of your squares are going to match up perfectly. And for those of you who also quilt, you can really appreciate this concept here. If you have two squares that are not quite going to match up properly, then it's going to throw off the design in this pattern. So it's very geometric and you want everything to match. You want it to match up as best as, as possible. So wet blocking is a great tool to do that. All you're going to do is pin each of the squares down. I would suggest laying out all of the squares in the pattern as, as the pattern suggests and 
pinning them together. That way you can stretch the ones that are too small to fit up next to the ones that are bigger and then saturate them completely with just lukewarm tap water. Let them dry overnight and when you unpin them they'll be nice and crisp and have clean edges like the ones you see here. So once we have everything crocheted and wet blocked and we're ready to join them together and this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to just work two squares at a time. So I'm, I'm starting here at the bottom left corner of the wall hanging. I'm putting them together and I want to use the same color yarn to sew them together as of course what I'm working on. So I have some red yarn here. I'm working in rather small cuts. This is a couple feet long and I'm just going to work on this edge here and then that's it. I'm going to leave it there. So I want to fold these together so that the right sides are towards each other and you'll know what is the right side based on on the pattern and how you're setting up your squares. So the pattern says that the red part of the block should be down here and the half square or the triangle is going to be down here. So I'm just going to flip this up that way they're facing each other and I'm going to sew along this edge. So you can work in either direction that you're comfortable. I'm going to start over here and the most important thing is that we make sure we get a stitch in as many places as we can. So we don't want to have any holes or anything like that. And just leave yourself a little tail on the other side. Now I'm going to be working in whip stitches for this so I'm going to be working in the same direction all of the time. So I'm going to be working from this side and going back and then coming through and going back. Now I recommend that you try to work these into the stitches or into the threads as much as possible. That way it's going to keep it secure and we should have a very clean join. Since we're working on edges that don't have the V's or the stitches, it's going to be a little bit trickier for us to sew these together. But if you look at the side, what I have here is one of the chains, the turning chains. So I'm just catching the turning chain and whip stitching through that. And you can just do that along the whole edge. And whatever pattern you, you work in, just make sure you're keeping it consistently throughout the entire side. That way your stitches will look even. So once you've worked all across the side, then we can just go ahead and remove our darning needle. What we'll do with these ends later on is we'll tie them off for security. We'll weave them in when we're finished. So you'll want to check a few times as you're sewing along to make sure that your edges and your seams are looking pretty even and, and nice and straight. So as you can see here, you, we've got a pretty nice seam. And so we're ready to move on to the next section. So we have another one of these triangles and it's supposed to be sewn along this edge here. So I'm going to use some red again. I'm going to flip this so that way my two edges, or my two right sides are facing each other and I'm going to sew along this edge here. So this time I'm going to be working in this direction starting here and going this way and then I'm going to use this tail to tie off the end once I've reached that side.
So when the corners meet, you really want to make sure that you add some extra stitches. That way, you're not going to have a little hole in the middle. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm going to make sure I catch some of the last stitches there on each one of this block here and this one here. But I'm also going to incorporate this corner here because you can kind of see there's some separation there. So once you add your stitch there, it's always a good idea to turn it on the right side, make sure everything looks all right. And if you like how you have it, then I'll demonstrate how we're going to tie these off. So we'll just flip them over to the back. I'm going to trim off this. And I'm just going to tie this in a knot. That's going to reinforce the stitches on both sides. And then I can just weave these in later. So go ahead and finish sewing all of your blocks together. We'll meet back up and we'll talk about how to add the fringe. And at that point, our projects will be completed. According to the instructions, we need to make cuts of yarn that are 36 inches long. And we're going to group two of those together and fold it in half. And this is going to make up one fringe. Now you can really begin working from either direction. I'm going to start up here in the corner and work my way out. So the instructions don't specify how often you need to make a fringe, so how, how many stitches you need to leave in between your, your pieces of fringe. It just says to keep things even. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a fringe in every other stitch. So I'm going to start off with this stitch here at the very beginning. And in order to make your fringe lay correctly, I like to work my crochet hook in from the back side. So down here, this is the wrong side of the work. So I'm working my hook into the stitch from that direction out. Okay? So when you have your hook in your stitch, just place the loop on your hook. So this is my fringe that's folded in half. And pull it through that stitch and you'll just pull through a little bit and then grab the tail and pull it through that loop and pull tight and I'm going to skip the stitch that's right next to the fringe I just added and then I'm going to work it into the next one And that's all there is to it. That's the final step for our wall hangings, is just adding this fringe. So throughout this tutorial, I've demonstrated how to crochet each of the blocks that makes up your wall hanging, how to change colors when you need to transition. We've talked about how to do these triangle pieces at the bottom of your wall hanging. We've talked about how to sew them together and how to add on the fringe. You now have all the resources necessary to finish up your wall hanging. So at this point, I'm going to go and finish up my fringe and complete my own wall hanging. A big thanks to Yarnspirations for bringing this project together. On behalf of BeHookedCrochet.com as well as Yarnspirations.com, I'm your host, Brittany, and this has been the Geometric Wall Hanging. Stay tuned. We'll see you next time.